H5Pi has relatively sophisticated chunk caching frameworks that are part of the HDF5 library. Recent additions added support for H HDF5 chunk frameworks. And there are three primary parameters that, that control the chunk cache framework for, for HDF5 within, that's been implemented in H5Pi. Now to understand more about, about how HDF5 does chunk caching and what that all means, it's important to look at the previous video that covers this. This is going into the details of how to leverage the chunk caching feature in H5Pi. These are three parameters and they're passed during the file open command for H5Pi. So when you're calling a new file to open, you have to specify these, these any of these three parameters at that time if you want to use the set them uh, outside of their defaults. The first one and the most important one is rdcc n bytes. This parameter passed again during h5pi.file. So if you're not sure, that's at h5pi. dot file and you would open up the h5 file dot 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 and then you pass in rdcc n bytes and you put in some integer as the as the number so that's sort of they just it's just it's just a per, you know parameter in the actual file call rdcc n bytes sets the chunk cache size in bytes on a per data set level. So this is where you have to do some math because your chunk shape is defined in elements of your data set. So you have to take a look at what the chunk shape is. You have to multiply that by what element type you're using, whether they're in 16s or they're, you know, they're doubles or whatever it may be. Calculate then, that's the size of a single chunk. Then you have to figure out how many chunks you want to have in your cache. And then you have to think about whether that's going to work for all the different files, that you, all the different data sets you have in that particular file. So if you're using the same type of data set with the same type of chunking, then your life is pretty easy. If you have mixed environments where you've got different types of data sets with different type of file formats, then you don't really know, you know, there may not be a single best parameter, so you just gotta get, you know, put something up. The key here though, is to understand that by default, H5Pi chooses a default value for you. And that default value is one megabyte. And that might not be enough. So this default is one megabyte. And in many cases, that is not large enough. It's a safe number to work with as a default, why? Because that means the library by default won't, won't consume a lot of resources. But in many large data set applications, you need way more than one meg of chunk cache. You know, it's completely fine to put this up at 50 or 100 megs or even half a gig or a couple gigs, depending on the workload. And you need to think about what that would, what your workload is gonna look like and how, what your strategy for working with the data is going to be um, to best understand what that n bytes parameter should be. The next parameter is the rdcc underscore w0 parameter. This parameter sets the eviction policy and it's just a Boolean, uh, sorry, it's just a double, it's just a floating point number between zero and one. And this is a little confusing to think about, but it only makes sense when you can think about what happens when the chunk cache is full. So imagine you have a particular chunk cache that you've defined, right? this is the size of your n bytes, and let's say that it holds a certain number of, of chunks. Right, let's say it holds however many I'm going to draw here. One, two, three, four, five, six, twelve chunks. So you, your your chunk cache can support up to twelve chunks. And let's say for whatever reason you've filled up, you started writing to this. You know, you've written this one completely. You've written this to some. You've read. Uh, we'll do the red ones. We'll say that red is in red. That makes life a little easier. Um, 
let's say if you're reading from them, right, these are showing up in red, and you've read completely from these ones, but you've only partially read from this, um, but you've, you know, completely read from this one. There are different ways that you can specify. This parameter tells h5pi what to do with the data, what to do with the chunks when things get full and you need to load a new piece of chunk into your, you're requesting a new piece of chunk to either write, read or write from. The parameter, if it is zero, then it will always evict the least used chunk from the chunk cache. Meaning, whichever one was last of the set to be accessed, that one it's going to assume is the one you you need least because that was you, it's the, it's sitting there stale, meaning you haven't read or written to it. Uh, it's older in terms of your the time that you've last read or read from it, written or read from it from than any other uh, chunk in your cache. That's the first one to go. So if you set it at zero, then this is purely a last used chunk gets the first one to be booted out. On the other hand, if you set it to one, then it will still follow a last used policy for eviction, but it will condition that on the last used chunk that was either fully written from or fully read, uh, written to or fully read from. What does this mean? This means that If it's assuming that when it, this would be this would be under the assumption where the model with which you are trying to access data is you're pulling in various chunks, but the underlying assumption is you're going to fully read or write to these chunks at some point, maybe in a mixed mode environment, but that's the way you're doing it. And so in that case, H5Pi will hang on to or instruct this parameter will instruct HDF5 to hang on to chunks that are partially written to or partially read from. Because, and instead, we'll evict ones that uh, the least, the last used one that was fully read or written from. That's what the full, pure one will do. And zero and some number in between will be some hybrid policy in between there. And in the case that there are no um, chunks that are fully read or written from, then it just reverts back to least used or last used. So that's what this parameter does. It's a little weird, but it, it makes sense if you think about what the workflows are. If you know you'll be reading or writing from all of the chunks at some point and you have this sort of mixed mode access where you're randomly picking different chunks out just because that's what you need at the moment, then it could be more, much more favorable to pull to, to set that number to one. On the other hand, if you're just going to read little bits here and there and you're just going to traverse through your data quickly or you're updating little bits and that's, you know, it's always going to be little pieces that you're updating, then it's fine to set it at zero. In many cases, you may not even bother to need, this, need to change this. So that's the second parameter. And the third parameter is RDTC end slots. So all, all of these parameters are RDCC, right? It stands for the raw data chunk cache. That's the, that's the HDF5 term for it. End slots simply defines the total chunk cache slots across the entire file. And this is, this is just a, a, tape, a pointer table maximum that shows, that describes how many total chunks across all of the data sets in a given file can live in the cache. H5Pi sets that default number to 512. Depending on your workload, you may need more, you may need less. Um, it's fine to leave the default as is if it's enough, but if you do need more, it's important to turn this number up. Uh, this has to do, this, this, this will be important to think about if you just need to keep in mind what your chunk cache shape look, so what your chunk shape looks like, um, and how much, how much, um, how much memory you're you're allocating for for the chunk uh, cache itself, and so that interaction. If there's thousands that you could potentially store, then you know if you're if you're allocating you know uh, you know two gigabytes for your chunk cache, and 
your chunks are really small, such as you could store 10,000 chunks in your chunk cache, then you need to increase this number a lot. Otherwise, you're only ever going to have 512 uh, elements in your in your cache before you start evicting, and that doesn't that doesn't help your you you in any way. So those three parameters control uh, from H5Py how HDF5's chunk caching framework is is set. They're a little a little weird to, to think about, but at a high level they make sense. And just knowing how to use these will will make your make your data processing a lot more efficient.